welcome to the Yishai Fleischer Show, broadcasting on the Land of Israel Network to the world. You're a part of it wherever you are. Shalom and welcome to Los Angeles, California, City of Angels. City of Angels, you have to believe that there's something spiritual and religious in just the fact that it has this name, as we say in Latin, Nomen Omen. The name is an omen. And indeed, I am in the City of Angels, and I have met some great angels here. In the time that I've uh, uh, spent here, had an excellent event yesterday in Beverly Hills. You know what's fun about California uh, is that like the stereotypes are kind of real. Uh, it's just it's got a different beat, it's got a different pace. Uh, I find that when I want to get into the beat and pace of California, I kind of have to listen to music. Uh, from there, I kind of uh, scroll through the radio dial uh, or scan through the radio dial, and when I find something by like. You know, uh, the, the Gentile artists of California, if it's Tom Petty or the Red Hot Chili Peppers, I find that they have a, uh, an understanding of the speed of the city. And um, uh, this is a different city. It's not one that I'm, uh, I always find it to be uh, kind of unsettling in the sense that it's not easy for me to capture the, the pace of the city and under understand its, its kind of ebbs and flows. Uh, I'm a I'm a kind of uh, one of my hobbies is to be a student of cities. I like to understand the beat of a city and and especially the major cities of this world. If it's you know London and, and, and Paris and Prague and and and, ha and uh, Amsterdam, uh, certainly uh, our great cities, uh, Jerusalem, the greatest city, uh, and it's kind of matching made in my heart, which is New York City. And uh, they compare and contrast. Uh, and Los Angeles uh, has got a beat which is, I just, I never really quite master it. I never quite understand it. I find that those artists that I mentioned before are, are really ones that somehow are um, in line with the, with, the, with the pace of this city. In any case, Los Angeles is always mysterious and interesting to me. I, I think maybe that's why I come back here. Uh, and when I come back here, of course, I do events to try to bring the spirit of Israel to uh, uh, to Los Angeles, and I try to bring the power of the Jewish people and friends of the Jewish people back to Israel. Uh, one of the main communities here that's also very fascinating is the Persian community, and I got to spend time with some amazing Persian Jews, uh, including Rabbi Shofet, Rabbi David Shofet, uh, who's the 13th rabbi in a long line of rabbis who have led the Jewish community in Iran, and of course, I say Iran. I, I really hate it when people say Iran and stuff like that. It's like, come on, it's Iran. And and one of the jokes around here is that this place is also called Tehranjelis. Tehranjelis is Tehran, Los Angeles. There's a, of course a major, uh, both uh, Muslim and tr and you know regular Gentile Iranian community here, and a strong Jewish community as well. Very interesting. Uh, and and there's something very ancient about them and yet in a lot of ways the Persian community is also a community that has has assimilated a lot into California culture for good and for bad in any case uh, that's that's about California and, and I think the reason I'm starting the uh, the show today with the issue of California other than the fact that I'm in the Pico Roberts the Jewish part of Los Angeles California and here I am um, is I think it, it actually fits uh, smashingly well into the Torah portion that we have to deal with. And of course, uh, I'm not with Rabbi Mike Foyer, who is back in the Holy Land, and I am here looking for uh, shards, sparks of the Holy Land. And uh, it, the Torah portion this week is the Torah portion of Toldot, uh, which is really about Yitzchak. And we kind of get to meet Yitzchak a little bit, this kind of stoic type character. Uh, that you meet in bits and spurts. You don't. You never feel like you really have a, a great clue into who uh, Isaac is, uh, who Yitzchak is. His name it means like laughter. He shall laugh. They laughed, and we in this week's Torah portion we we see that he actually laughs with his wife. He sports or jests with his wife or has some kind of marital uh, you know tenderness, closeness. Uh, that that Avimelech sees through the window, but you kind of like when you when when it says that when it says that he loved his wife in the previous Torah portion and that he jests with his wife, there's this closeness. 
you're, you're like you're always a little surprised. I'm at least always a little surprised because Yitzchak is a kind of stoic character, a type of character who's um, he's a little bit removed from this world. And and I uh, learned uh, a fantastic uh, piece of piece of knowledge, which is going to be a little bit hard to, to transmit through the radio here, uh, through the podcast. But I'll try to do it anyway. Uh, is that we? Um, Last week's Torah portion, when we last left off, we saw that Rebecca, Rivka, and I'm going to use the Hebrew names, we saw that Rivka uh, sees Yitzchak from afar, and she she covers her face. Now the Hebrew the Hebrew terminology is, who she says who who is this person, Mi Ha'ish Halaze. So let me just say that again. So Rivka is, uh, she lifts up her eyes. She sees Isaac. She falls from the top of the camel, or as my explanation last week, she prays from the top of the camel. And uh, she says to the servant, Who is that man? Who is that strange man? Who's that masked man? Who is that guy? Uh, again, there's, there's an element of romance here, like... Who is that guy, right? It's like she's like moved by this person. Um, I love these little clues into in these moments of of the Torah where where like a very human interaction happens. She's just wowed by him. That's that's the bottom line. But the word halaze is a strange word. It, it's it's a strange word. Uh, not always even a very positive word, but it it kind of doesn't fit in the context. It should be mi ha'isha ze mi ha'ish. Who is this person? But the word halaze is a strange form. And uh, I saw in the uh, Rabbi Chaim Cohen, also known as the Chalban, the milkman, great uh, scholar that's still alive today. And he's called the milkman because he's also a cheesemaker. And we all know uh, from the uh, from the life of Brian that blessed are the cheesemakers. And so uh, the cheesemaker says, uh, that he quotes the Megaleh Mukot, the revealer of secrets, which is a which is a commentary on the Torah, and he says that Halazem is really uh, four letters: Hey, Lamed Zayin Hey. The middle two letters, Lamed Zayin, uh, in n- numerology equal thirty-seven. That's the years of thirty uh, thirty-seven years that Isaac lived until the binding, until the Akedah, and basically he actually died at the binding. His life, he became kind of ethereal, otherworldly at the binding. He kind of went up. He became a perfect offering. And the two hays, before and after, represent also um, the hays that his father and mother got from God. Avraham got the hay. Sarah got the hay. And so, therefore, here's a man who, who carries forward the legacy of his parents with these hays that he has. Uh, said about him but he himself kind of finished his earthly life at 37 and continues to exist in this world but a, a little bit supernatural a, a, a bit ethereal and the double haze the before and after also uh, are uh, are represented by the word hamach pela the double cave which is hey kfula double hey okay so uh, abraham and sarah are buried there they're represented by these two haze the name of God has two Hays. The letter Hay is like equivalent to the H sound uh, in in English, but but Isaac carries with him uh, this kind of uh, on the one hand otherworldly, on the other hand he's carrying actually the legacy of his parents, and uh, we see in this Torah portion that him and his uh, beloved wife Rivka are having a hard time having children. They they basically do not have children for twenty years, if you make the calculations. It says that that. That the they got married when when he was forty, and then when he was sixty, he had children. So twenty years they had to pray. And how do I know they had to pray? Because the Torah actually says that they prayed, they prayed. And this is one thing about Isaac and Rebecca is that they pray together. And this is something I also want to kind of try to recommend to married couples: try to pray together sometimes. Tell yourselves, let's take five minutes, let's take ten minutes, let's take twenty minutes to say some psalms together in the same room. There's a great power the Torah teaches us when a husband and wife pray together. And Rebecca uh, becomes pregnant with twins. And these twins begin to tussle and fight within the womb. She goes 
and asks God, and God says to her, she's like, what is going on? She could feel it's something strange. God says to her, Shnei goyim bevitnech, you have two nations in your stomach. Veshnei leumim, and two uh, leumim, maybe ethnicities, or, 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 or another way of saying nations, mimeaychi paredu, they'll become separated from your, your, your innards. Uleom milaomi emats, and a nation, uh, maybe that means that they will kind of eternally will fight one another. Um, one will gain strength from the other. Veravi avod sair, and the multitude, the the big one, will serve the younger one, the big one, Esav, or Edom, right? Edom will serve Jacob at the end. But the Talmud tells us that this means that there's like an eternal conflict between these two energies, these two uh, these two nations, and and two um, directions that are going to issue forth from uh, Rivka. And, and by the way, again, uh, look at Rivka. As I told you last week, she is the epitome of 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 determination and knowing what she wants done and at every turn that you encounter rebecca you will see this sure-footedness sure-footedness in this case she's pregnant she senses that, that, that there's something strange and she demands from god she she goes to ask of god but she doesn't hem and haw she wants to know what this means she wants prophecy she wants knowledge she wants guidance to you know and she demands it and gets it uh, and this is why I'm always amazed at this character of Rivka. She's an incredible person, and at every uh, at every step, at every step. Uh, by the way, uh, speaking, I just wrote an email to uh, one of the listeners of the show. I have such great uh, friends that listen to the show. I don't even like the word listeners. It's really my friends and people I'm connected with. In this case, Tammy. I, I wrote her a letter. She's having a, a, a bat mitzvah for her daughter. And wanted to talk about, you know, where she should tour, tour her daughter to give her a real, like, women's uh, empowerment uh, tour. I, well, you, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, like women's strength. Like, what, who, who our nation is uh, through the women of our nation. And I just want to take a parenthesis and say that as my, at my job in, in Hebron, uh, uh, serving the fathers and mothers of the Jewish community in Hebron, by the way, when I'm out here, I really feel like I'm like, that's my job to be the consigliere of, uh, of the mothers and fathers. And when somebody like rejects me, either to see me or, to, or when, I, when I ask for help for the Jewish community and funding and stuff, I'm just like, do you, I want to say to them, do you understand that I am coming in the name of Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, Sarah, Rivka, and Leah? Like, do you, do you get that? I'm not even talking the name of myself. I am nobody here. <laughs> and like I, you don't have to honor me i don't care but like please you know give kavod and to to the to the fathers and mothers and give kavod too uh uh give kavod to the people who who live in hebron who are heroes standing up and keeping the place open for you and what i was saying is is that i really believe that this year we will start working on much more of a women's consciousness in hebron I'm looking forward to having more events, more tours that are really geared towards women. The mothers are there. The mothers are there. And this Torah portion is, is, a, is a mother's Torah portion par excellence. The hero here from beginning to end is Rivka. She is heroic throughout, uh, especially towards the end. We'll see what incredible risks she takes in order to, to fulfill her understanding of prophecy. In any case... As I'm here in Los Angeles, we're talking about, uh, at least I feel the tension between Israel and, and, a, and a powerful Jewish city like Los Angeles. Um, here is the tension right there between the Esavian line and the line of Jacob. And, and that's told uh, to, to Rivka. Uh, at the end, Esav is going to come out. He's starting to come out of the womb and he's being born. He comes out reddish. He's, he's hairy. They called him Esav. And then his brother comes out and in a very, uh, in my opinion, very painting-like, uh, painting-like fashion, 
um, he comes out. Jacob comes holding on to the to the heel of Esav. In Hebrew, his akev. V'yado ochezed be'akev Esav. His hand is holding on, grabbing the heel of Esav, and they called him Yaakov, right? The kind of the, the gripper, the guy who's on your heels, he's on your footsteps. That's a that's a tricky name, right? And that's a tricky name to have, Yaakov. And my second name, by the way, is Yisha Yaakov. And it's it's a it's a name, it, it, it's a name that it's a little bit like I like to say it's the Clark Kent of names. Uh, right? Because Israel is the Superman name, so Yaakov is the Clark Kent of names, and there's a beauty to Clark Kent, right? He's like, he's uh, he's mild-mannered, and, and he's a little bit goofy sometimes. In this case, Yaakov is an Ishtam. He is going to be, we're going to learn about him in the next verse, that he is a simple or whole man or truthful man. That's very important because he's going to come out to be a bit of a, a trickster. Don't take me out of context, a kind of shyster, Right? It's a, it's a, I'm using that as a tongue in cheek. Don't write me an email saying that I'm giving into anti-Semitism. I'm trying to, you know, uh, so, sometimes stereotypes are, are, are useful and even in terms of humor a little bit. So don't, don't flip out. I'm trying to make a point, which is like, you think that Jacob is a really kind of tricky Jewish, uh, you know, character. And yet the Torah tells us beforehand, know this, he's an ish tam. He's, he's perfect. He's whole. He's, uh, he's simple. He's pure. And he's a Yoshev Ohalim. Uh, he sits in tents. Either he studies Torah or maybe he's a, a herdsman. And then it says that, that Yitzchak loved Esav. Kitzayed b'fiv. Because hunt is in his mouth. Uh, and my beloved wife Malka always likes to say that Isaac, who grew up with Ishmael, likes and respects the older brother who's, uh, who's more physical, um, who's a great hunter. Probably Ishmael was. The Torah doesn't tell us that, but he's you know more of a uh, an outside person. And Esav has hunt in his mouth. He's able to get from this world. He's able to grab this world by the horns, and and he, and and the hunt is in his mouth. The hunt is in his mouth. Not that he's able to to tame animals or grow animals, but the hunt is in his mouth. And this is one of the first, the second clue, I guess, we get that Esav is animalistic. He comes out hairy, he's reddish, he's bloody kind of, and the hunt is in his mouth. When you think of a hunt in the mouth, you think to yourself, there must be blood dripping also from the mouth because if, if the hunt is in the mouth, that means the teeth have sunk it into it and there's a, there's a wounded animal in your mouth and we get this image that Esav, and we're going to get that reinforced again, that Esav is a type of um, aggressive, violent uh, and bloody and redness is, is the theme. Uh, and Rivka, it says, loves in the present tense Jacob. Rivka loves Jacob. And our rabbis add that Esav, we, we, the rabbis tell us, halacha beyadua, it is a known halacha that Esav sonel Yaakov. Esav hates Yaakov. Esav, Esav hates Jacob. Uh, but Rivka, she always loves Jacob and loves in the present tense. There's a tense shift. Isaac loved Esau, but Rivka continually loves Jacob. Something in that in that phrase, if you think about it deeply, uh, as a nation, that we have a mother like Rivka who always loves us. It's um, there's something very warming and and kind of um, tragic a little bit about that. We'll we'll understand later why. And the first thing that we meet our beloved forefather Jacob is that he is stewing a stew. He is he is preparing a soup. And the, uh, the Medrash tells us that this soup that he's making is because Abraham dies on this day. And he's making a, a soup of the a lentil soup of the kind that is served during the seven-day mourning period. But in the simple text, he is preparing a soup. And Esav comes from the field and he's tired. In this case, it means that he's hungry. And Esav says to, to Yaakov, give me some of that red, red soup. He's so hungry. He's so physical at this moment that he can't even formulate the word soup. He says, give me some of that red stuff. And you've got to believe that Yaakov Jacob is, is making this soup because he knows that, that Esav has a weakness to red things. 
like some birds, you know. I think ravens or something grab like like red string and stuff. It's like it's like he just has a uh, a visceral reaction to red things, and, and and so he says to to Jacob, "Give me some of that red red. Remember that song, red red wine, right? Give me some of that red red soup, because I'm hungry." And it's for this reason that he was called red, right? Um, and this theme of redness uh, goes throughout his life. So it says Jacob in this moment of, of his brother's weakness, he says, sell me today your birthright. Sell me today your birthright. Right? So some kind of status. And answers him, Esav, Look, I'm about to die. Is he really about to die? But he feels like he's going to die. What do I need this birthright for? It's something ethereal. It's something about tomorrow. But I need something today. And that's what Jacob says to him. Sell me today your birthright. Because it's about today for you, Esav, isn't it? It's about today. It's about what you can get today. And Jacob is thinking about what he needs tomorrow or maybe even in the next world to come. And that's, and that's exactly what Esau says. I'm about to die today. I'm about to die. My body, because it's all about my body. My body is, is uh, expiring. Lama What do I need this? The birthright. That's for later. However, Yaakov... Continues with his uh, um, usage uh, of this weak moment, exploitation in a sense. And he says, Vayomer Yaakov, Yaakov says, He shav'a li kayom. Swear to me as is the day. Because it's about now for you. So swear to me on the now. Vayishavalo. And Esav swore to him, Vayimkor et bechorato, Yaakov. And indeed he sold his birthright to Jacob. First thing, like, where did Jacob even get this idea about getting the birthright? Where do you even get that idea? And where do you get the idea to make red, red soup? There's like a wisdom here. And an also, also there's, there's something uh, duplicitous or, or at least um, uh, secretive, tricky. There's a trickiness here. I mean, we just, the only thing we knew about him is he was a baby born holding on to his brother's ankle. Next thing we know, he's exactly when he's coming, when, when his brother's coming out of, the, out of the forest or out of the field, he's stewing exactly the right soup and he speaks exactly the right language. And he gets, where does he, where does he get it from? And it's a purchase, right? It's a good purchase. It's a, there's no God in here. I always, I always like to point out, you see, this is like a contractual moment, just like the purchase of the Martha Machpelah. There's a contractual moment. Here too, it's like there's no... It's a fair, it, what happens here may be an exploitation of a moment of weakness, and yet at the same time, uh, you know, that all, all sales are about subjective value, right? So my, my dollar at that moment is worth less for me than the paper that I'm going to buy, right? But the paper may not be, for the people who are selling it, the paper is, the dollar is worth more than the paper, right? So right now, it's a fair purchase. It's a, nothing happened here. That's really duplicitous. In fact, everything's out in the open. But still, though, um, th there is a cunning. Maybe that's the word I'm looking for. There's a cunning moment here. And indeed, Jacob gave his brother Esav, the brother I added, he gave to Esav uh, bread and this soup, uh, this uh, lentil soup, Vayochal, Vayesht. And, and the tradition adds that he actually poured it down his gullet. He was so tired and, and, and he wanted to be fed. He wanted to be kind of really serviced. Vayochal, Vayesht. He ate, he drank, Vayakam. He got up, Vayelech, and he went. He didn't contend. Con he didn't, he didn't uh, d dispute the sale. Vayibez Esav et Abchorah. And then the narrat narration of the Torah tells us he lost. He, 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 uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, uh, it's from the word bizayon. He disgraced. And he, he saw it as valueless, uh, his birthright, right? He, he kind of like threw it away. 
The next part I'm not going to talk too much about, uh, but it's the the contention between. But back now to Yitzchak. Now we're going to meet Yitzchak a little bit, right? And uh, and there's a disagreement what happened first. It could be that this next section actually happened before the section we we just learned about, and this is the section where Isaac is really still without children, and him and uh, Rivka go down uh, to Gerar, which is close to Gaza today, and that's because there's a famine in the land, and uh, God says to him, don't leave the land of Israel, do not go down to Egypt, Gur live only in this land, I shall be with you, and I will bless you, uh, for, for your, to your seed I will give all this, these lands, and I will fulfill the promise that i made to abraham your father i will i will add to your seed like the i will make your seed many like the stars of the heavens and i'm going to give these lands to your children and through your seed will all the nations of the world be blessed and here's something i said i was today on the ethan behrman show uh, here in los angeles uh, it's broadcasting in, in San Francisco, actually. And I just wanted, to, I said something that I, I don't know if it was actually appropriate for American radio. And what I said was, is that there's this something I, I, I genuinely believe in is that the Jew in the world is like a yeast. We are meant to be a yeast. When I say that, I mean that in all isms, Jews are involved. Jews are always searching for meaning. And in their involvement in isms, it could be capitalism or communism whatever it is, all the other isms as well, they spread ideas, the Jews, and they're catalysts for growth in any society. Uh, and that's what the Torah tells us. The world shall be blessed through your seed. Right? Somehow your seed is a blessing to others. That's exactly what I mean, that the Jewish people are meant to be a kind of yeast. And why, why is it that they're going to be such a blessing? The Torah tells us, and God tells Isaac, Ekev, asher shama Avraham bekoli, it is because, and notice the word Ekev, which is like the word Yaakov, uh, which means uh, in the heels of, because of. Ekev, asher shama Avraham bekoli, because Abraham heard my voice, followed my voice, veishmor, and he kept, mishmartai, mitzvotai, chukotai, v'toratai, he kept, my and there's you know various translations here. My commandments, uh, my Torahs, uh, my 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 ways, uh, and my un understandable laws. In any case, Yitzchak is in Grar. Uh, people become jealous of him. Uh, they almost take his wife or, or or want to touch his beautiful wife. Uh, the king there sees that he's actually that Isaac is married to Rivka, and they kick the, they kick uh, Yitzchak out. And the wells that Abraham dug and that Yitzchak used, they kind of stuffed up, which is, reminds us of, of Philistine behavior, which is that uh, sometimes they just, they're not even going to take a well, they're just going to stuff it up because there's something entropic. There's some element of entropy, uh, reversal of creativity, which uh, the Philistines suffer from. And I must say that even today's Philistines act in the same manner. They really are the opposite of the orderly and creative impulse. And what's going to happen is that, uh, they're, that Isaac, Yitzchak, and his servants are going to go away and they're going to need to find new sources of water and they're going to dig wells and these wells are going to be disputed by the, by the shepherds of Gerar and uh, Isaac is going to give them names and these names are going co to correspond the first two are going to be these wells that people are in a fight with him so he says you know this is he calls them names uh, that that involve revolve around conflict but the third well that he finds is called Rechovot God has widened out for us this land and we will indeed be able to um We'll be able to sink roots in this land. We'll be able to take it up. We'll be able to 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 uh, to be successful at at it. At it. Let me just find the verse for you. Vaikra Shma Rechovot. He named it Rechovot. Streets. We call. We would. We would translate it today. Vayomer. And he said, Ki Ata Hashem Lano, because now God widened out for us. 
ufarinu ba'aretz, and we became fruitful. We shall become fruitful in the land. And then he goes up to Be'er Sheva, one of the seven holy Ishai's uh, biblical count of seven holy cities. If you've never heard my, my talk about that, really, I believe that there's uh, the correct way to view it is that there's seven holy cities. I think that is the, the biblical tale. And Be'er Sheva is one of those. It's the southernmost holy city, uh, the kind of first city, the desert city, the flatland city. And God showed up that night to him and he said, I am your fa- the God of your father, Abraham. Do not be afraid. Because I'm with you. I am with you. How many of us want God to say that to us? Because I am with you. Because I, God, am with you. I shall bless you. I will make your seed plenty. Because of my, my servant Abraham. And that's what I said to you in the beginning of the show. That, that Isaac carries with him the promise of of and the energy of Abraham and Sarah, Halazet, the two Hays. And Isaac turns around, he builds a uh, he builds a, a ramp, an offering, altar, Vikra Bashem Hashem, he called the name of God there, and there he stuck his tent. And then they found another well, and that well is going to be Be'er Sheva. It's going to be called Sheva. And once again the city is renamed for another rationale. And that is uh, because of the, uh, the, the the name that was given to the well. And then because of the oath that Isaac is going to demand that the Philistines make that this Beersheva is a Jewish well. Beersheva, the Philistines swore to the Jewish people that Beersheva is Jewish. And yet today, if you go down to the south, there's an effort to really take over uh, the land of Israel by the Bedouins. And sadly, the state of Israel is not doing enough to tackle that problem of uh, this takeover and the forgetting of that oath. At the end of the Torah portion uh, is the famous and infamous deed of the grabbing of the blessing, the trickiness. And it was uh, that Isaac became old and he became blind. And he calls his elder son, Esav, and he says to him, he says to him, uh, where are you, my son? And he says, I'm here. And that reminds us exactly of the, of the language that, that, that Isaac says to his father, where are you? And he says, here I am, right? Um, uh, he, 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 he said, he said uh, this, almost the same language. Isaac says to his father, where are you, father? And he says, here I am. So here he says, where are you, son? And he says, here I am. And here you, you, you want to have a little bit of sympathy for Esav. Esav saying the same language that his father, um, that the father of Isaac gave him consolation. I'm with you, my son. And here's, here's the son, Isaac, who's famous for his kibbutz avem. He says, I'm with you, my father, to the same person. And you want to believe that, that Esav is a decent fella. And yet uh, he gets clobbered. In, in the uh, in the literature, and that is because uh, he is excellent at putting on a show, and we'll see that later on as well. He's an excellent show. Uh, he, we'll see just in a second. He puts on shows. He may smile outwardly, and yet he already has it in his heart to murder his own brother and to await the day that his father dies so that he could murder his own brother. So what you see is not what you get. Um, and Isaac says to him, Look, I've gotten old. I don't know the day that I died, uh, that I shall die. And now do me a favor. Uh, put on your, uh, your battle gear, your hunting gear, and go to the field and, and hunt for me a hunt. And make me deli- de- delicacies. I was about to say deliciousnesses. Z-z-z. Make me delicacies that I loved and bring me to eat. Get, so bring me, some, bring me the food. Why? So that my soul can bless you before I pass away. Now here's here's my lady, okay? Here's Rivka. She is listening. She hears. She remember in the beginning of the Torah portion I told you she had stuff going on in her belly, in her womb, and she just wants to know what the truth is, so she goes and demands to hear that. Here she also knows how to put an ear to the tent and she knows what's going on. She knows what's up. Some people just know what's up. That's one of the things you learn about, about the righteous people. They, they have these traits that we should emulate. One of the things about Rivka is she knows what's up. She knows what's going on. She's not detached. She's very much aware. 
and she says, and she she hears uh, Isaac talking to his son Asaph, and Asaph, and she notices that Asaph goes to the field to hunt a hunt and to bring it. And Rivka said to Yaakov, her son, right, saying, "I heard your father speaking to Asaph, your brother, saying, bring me the hunt, uh, so I shall eat, and and uh, therefore I will bless you before God before I die." And now, my son, here's the Rivka moment, right? And now, my son, listen to me. Hearken in my voice. Shma Bekoli. Listen to me, for I'm speaking. It's your mama. And I'm telling you, Shma Bekoli la'asher ani metzavah Listen to me, for I am commanding you. Bang! I told you, Rivka, she knows what's up. And she says, Lechna, please go to the cattle. Bring me to... Uh, goats, good ones, pick them good. I'll make them delicious delicacies for your father like he likes it. You shall bring it to him, and so he'll eat it and bless you before he dies. So Jacob says to his mother, My brother is a hairy man, and I am smooth. All right, and this can be read in two ways. One is, you know he's hairy and I'm smooth, but the, but the other way is he's he's a tricky fella and and uh and and kind of very physical and me I'm I am as we said in the beginning of the portion I'm I'm kind of smooth I'm I'm simple I'm I'm, I'm not, I don't I don't play these tricks maybe it's the wrong you know it's it's not me to do this maybe and and he keeps saying he says maybe my father will touch me will feel me and I will be in his eyes just a trickster. And I will bring upon myself a curse and not a blessing. And his mom says to her, to him, Rivka never misses a beat. Upon me is your blessings, my son. No, I said that. I said that because uh, I, 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 it was hard for me to say it. So I, so my mind uh, tried to trick me. No, uh, upon me is your curses, my son. Alai kladachabni. Ach. Shema Bekoli, but you must hearken to my voice, Velech Kachli. But do what as I say and bring me the stuff. Vayelech, Vayikach, Vayaveli Imo. There's these staccato phrases. He went, he brought. He took he went, he took, he brought to his mother. Vatas Imo Matamim. And his mother noticed this mother son, uh, you know, the son, the mother, they're very in, very closely related. Uh, she made these delicacies, just like his father. And here, it's not Yitzchak, but his father. There, this is a very, it's very familial language here. We're all family. But now, Vatikach Rivka, and Rivka took the son, the, the clothes of her older brother, of her older son, Esav, his beloved clothes. These are special clothes, and some people say it's the clothes that, that he inherited from Adam and from Nimrod, uh, which were kept with her in the house. And she dressed... Jacob, her younger son, and she took the skins from the goats that he brought, and she put them onto the arms, forearms, and onto the neck, the scruff of the neck uh, of Jacob. And she gave him the delicacies and the bread which she made. Uh, she gave it to to in the hand of Jacob, her son. And he comes into the tent. Here we go. Are you ready? Let's get ready to rumble, right? This is it. This is it. We got we got the son. He's trying to fake out his own dad here by getting the blessings in a fake way. There's no there's no hunt here. The the, the meat came from the flock. And it's not really Asav. So what what is this the Bible? Hello? What's going on here? This is not very Abrahamic. What is this? And he walks into the tent. Bum bum bum. He comes into his father. Oh my God! Now he's using the very lines that Isaac used in the Akeda, because the Akeda, the binding, is the seminal moment of Isaac. Avi, he says, "My father." Hineni, and he says, "I am here." Just like Abraham answered him uh, originally at the binding, he says, "Hineni, here I am." But he adds, "Who are you, my son?" Right. So right from the get go, there is suspicion. Vayomer Yaakov el Aviv, and Yaakov says to his father, Anochi Esav bechorcha, I am Esav, your firstborn. So wait a minute, wait a minute. So here's a, a moment that's very important to catch. 
I am Asaph, your firstborn. He is not Asaph, but he is the firstborn. Remember that, right? So it's a partial fib, but it's a partial truth. Because what we're going to see is, is that Asaph denies his sale of the birthright. But he says, Anochi, and, and there's other explanations. Some people say that he said here, I am. Asaph is your firstborn, right? But the, the simple meaning is, I am Esau, your firstborn, which is partially true and partially not true. Asiti kasher dibartelai. I have done which you have spoken to me, which is not exactly true. Kumna, please arise. Shva, sit down. Vachla mitzaydi, and eat from my hunt. Ba'avur tevacheni nefshecha. So that, so that exactly, you could, your soul could bless me. But there is suspicion in the air. Vayomer Yitzchak el bno. Isaac says to his son, how is it that you, you were so quick to find my son? Vayomer, and, and in this case, Jacob answering him, Ki hikra Hashem elokecha lefanai. Because Hashem, your God, revealed himself or happened before me. You need to say he hastened the situation. He, he helped me with the hunt. Now, this is very suspicious because... This is not how Isaac talks. Isaac, excuse me, this is not how Esav talks. Esav is not one to talk a lot about God, uh, that God made miracles happen for me. Remember, he gets it done by himself. He's got the hunt in his mouth. He's not a man of words. He's a man of action. And he doesn't usually say, yeah, God took care of it for me. So suspicion is being, uh, being uh, it's, there's, there's, a, there's a rise of a suspicion here. Vayomer Yitzchak Yaakov, Isaac says to Jacob, why don't you come close to me and I will touch you. I will feel you. I, I, will, I will kind of pet you. Let me figure out if you are my son, Esav, and if not. I wonder if this phrase was really said out loud or something that says in his heart, but it does seem to, to indicate that he says it out loud. So he is airing his suspicions. He's saying, why don't you come close to me and let me feel you because I'm not exactly sure who you are. And, and maybe in hindsight we'll see that he's really testing Jacob to understand, did he take it all the way? Did he take this ruse all the way? Is this serious? And Jacob comes close to his father Isaac. And he touched him and he... And he kind of put his hands all around him. He, 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 he felt him. Vayomer, and Isaac says, Hakol kol Yaakov. The voice is the voice of Jacob. Vahayadaim yedei Esav. But the hands are the hands of Esau, of Esau. And I want to say to you, friends, that I believe that it is, this is a seminal, seminal verse. And the verse here is to tell us that Isaac actually blessed Jacob at this moment. He says, listen, the voice is the voice of Jacob. I know who you are. You're Jacob. But your hands, including this trickery, is the hands of Esau. And in, in, in one understanding is that that's exactly what I want to see from you, Jacob. You've been too long a man of tents. Too long have you been a man of, 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 of studying the Torah in the tents and a simple and a good man. I want to know if you can make it in this world because why I like Esau is that he knows how to make it in this world. He knows how to hunt. So when I hear that you have the voice of prayer, the voice of, of big ideas, and, and the voice of, that is heard in the tents of learning and, and scholarship, that's great. But do you have hands to build a country, to build a Jewish state, to, 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 be, uh, to have a king in Israel? And the answer is, Hakol Kol Yaakov. Yes, indeed, the voice is the voice of Jacob, the voice of prayer, the voice of Torah learning, but the hands, they must be the hands of Esau. You got to know how to how to manhandle this world. So this is the kind of a blessing. And then it says Veloi Kiro, but then the Torah says, but he didn't recognize him exactly. Ki because indeed, you know, his hands were the hands of of uh, of Esau, very hairy. That is not Yaakov. Vayivarchehu. So he blessed him. Vayomer zebni vayomer ata zebni Esav. He said to him again. Are you indeed my son, Esav? Vayomer ani, and he said, "Yes, I am." Uh, the the trickier explanation here is he said, "I am, I am, I am." I am. That's why he didn't say, "I am Esav." He says, "I am," and thereby, you know, finding a way not to actually lie to his father's face. Vayomer, 
אייזק סס טו הם, הגישה לי ואוכלה מצד בני. Give me, offer me up the food and let me eat from the hunt of my son, למען תברך לך נפשי, so that my soul can bless you. And here's, here's another question, which is the interplay between the physical body, which sometimes needs external stimuli. I can tell you that right now, my personal body is a little bit exhausted, and therefore spirituality doesn't come as easily to an exhausted person, an exhausted body. Uh, so says Isaac very, very deeply, says to him, give me the foods so that my soul uh, can have a better stay in this body. The soul is comfortable in the body. Uh, the soul is not feeling like it has to exit the body because the body is dying. Uh, and my soul can therefore bless you. And that's very important, by the way, that we should know that, that external stimuli have an, have an impact on a person. Vayigashlo, and he, indeed he offered it, Yaakov offered it up to Isaac. Vayochal, he ate it. Vayavelo yain, he brought him wine. Vayesht, this is an important moment, right? He gives him wine. And at any Jewish simcha, you have to have wine. Yesterday in Beverly Hills, I, I brought three delicious bottles of wine from the land of Israel. And folks, you know, if you listen to the show, and thank you so much, all the good folks that wrote to me that, that they listened to the end of the show, that made me so happy. And all the people that wanted blessings at Marat Machpelah over Chayi I got that as well. So God bless you. Uh, uh, from Marat Machpela and here from Los Angeles, I want to send you. If this is the city of angels, I want to send you good angels wherever you are. And thank you to all those folks that listen to the end of the show. Um, um, <laughs> I don't know how I got on that. Um, oh yeah, wine. That's right. I, I I told them drink Israeli wine Friday night, and everybody agreed to that. And I brought I brought one. Now I didn't bring them from Israel because it's hard to bring wines from Israel. But here at Glatmart, right? Glatmart, you can get. Mamash wines from the best parts of Eretz Yisrael. What a blessing it is to be able to bring people wines. And I just, it's, I brought pictures of Marat HaMachpelah to uh, the great event that we had here in, in Beverly Hills. I brought these beautiful wines and pictures of Marat HaMachpelah and people were drinking the wines. And for a few moments there, we were outside of time and space and we were indeed in the land of Israel in Hebron together. It was, it was so... So special, but wine can do that. Good, kosher, holy wine from the land of Israel will bring you, will bring you to the land of Israel. That's why you have to drink it, not to support Israel. Please, people, that's so superficial. The real depth of it is when you drink it, you are in the land of Israel. So, but that's, we're not done yet. There's still suspicion. Isaac says to him, Isaac's father says to him, why don't you come close to me and give me a kissy, my son? Give me a kiss. Give me, give me an embrace. Right, the embrace of the kiss. It says that. Give me a kiss, my son. I, lo I don't know. Wow. Kiss me. Give me a kiss, my son. And he got close to him and he gave him a kiss. Vayarach. And he smelt the scent of his clothing. And he blessed him, saying, Look at the scent of my son. Or I see the scent of my son. I'm blind, and but the scent is giving me a visual clue. And there's a lot of psychology and depth and spirituality in these phrases. But simply put, like I can... It evokes an image. Kereach Sadeh, because it's the smell of the field. Asher Bercho Hashem, which God has blessed him with. And um, the word field, we met it at the last Torah portion twice. We met it in that the field is the Marat HaMachpelah. And that's the field is the scent of the Garden of Eden. And we also met it at the end of last week's Torah portion that Isaac came out of praying in the field. And I smell that field on you, Jacob. And anybody, anybody who's been to the land of Israel knows that there's a, there's a smell. And there's some days when you live in Eretz Israel, uh, normally, sometimes there comes that smell. They're like, a smell comes and you're like, yes, that's the smell of the land of Israel. Right now, I have to tell you, I'm a little bit missing the smell of the land of Israel. Maybe I'm going to go out to the Glatmart and buy myself like a, a drink that's made in the land of Israel when I pop open that cap. 
I will I will take a deep inhale of the scent of the land of Israel. And then and then Isaac will go on to bless uh, very shortly and very deeply uh, Isaac, and he says, "V'iten Elohim, may the God give you mitala shemayim from the dews of the heaven, umishmane haaretz, from the fats of the land, verov degan v'tirosh, and you should have much, you know, um, grain and produce from the land and 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 the grapes from the land. Yavdu chaamim, may may nations serve you, v'ishtachavu lechalomim, and may other nations bow down to you. Have a gvir laachecha, you should be a, a lord over your brother, v'ishtachavu lecha bnei mecha, and may your uh, your your mother's children bow down to you. Orerecha arur. Those who curse you are cursed. And those who bless you are blessed. Boom! Short. That's that's Isaac. You know, he really gets right to the point. And, you know, once he's satisfied, he channels his spirituality. And that's what he says to him. Now, okay. And then he, and then, and then, okay, that was the blessing. Uh, two verses. Very powerful. Very, very concentrated blessings. It was when Isaac finished blessing Jacob. It was ju- he just slipped out. Jacob just slipped out of that tent. From the face of Isaac, his father. It's like a play. And Isaac, his brother, comes from the hunt. Right? So it's just as one sl- slips out. The next one walks in. Right? He too made delicacies and he brought it to his father and he says to his father you come avi get up father my father shall get up it's a little bit of a harsher language it doesn't have the please it's a little bit more commanding brother my father shall rise up and let him eat from the hunt of his son so that I, so that your your soul can bless me it's a little bit more materialistic it's a little bit more demanding it's a little bit more privileged. And his father, his father, Isaac, says to him, Miata, who are you? Who are you? I don't know you. And he said, I am your firstborn son, Esav. Now, is that true? The Ace of part is true, but am I your firstborn son? You kind of neglected to tell a little thing that happened back then when you came hungry, when you, one day you said, it's no big deal what's going to happen in the future. I need it now. So he's, not, so he's, he's also not telling the truth here. And Isaac feared a great fear, a very great fear. Right, there's going to be, you're going to see in a second that, that uh, there's big things that are happening right now. Isaac had a great fear, a great trepidation. Vayomer, and he said, me, who was that? Efo, me efo, who at side side, who was that, however? Who was that who hunted the hunt? Vayavet li, and he brought it to me. Vochal mikol beterem tavo, and I ate from everything. Before you came, vavarcheo, I blessed him. Gam Baruch Iyeh. Still, though, he will be blessed, right? And this is this is the the depth here. The depth here is that there is no resentment of Jacob for being tricky. In fact, there might even be a bit of a of of a of a joy, of a of a uh, approbation of of a uh, celebration of that. I uh, that Jacob knows how to manage this world. It's like good for you my son you knew how to you, you knew how to, to to squeeze it out you, you knew how to make it happen i like that that's what i've always wanted for you jacob that you don't just be a man of tense that you also know how to get it done in the real world and therefore even though you tricked me i kind of like that and therefore he, he remains blessed however that's from isaac's perspective right like oh i got tricked but look at that look at that that's my son good stuff but that is not Esau's reaction. Esau's reaction is not like, wow, nice one, Jacob. You really got me. Kishmo Esav, when Esav heard, et divre viv, when he heard the words of his father, vaitzak, tsaaka, gdola, umara ad meod, he yelled 
a, sc- a primal scream that was large and very bitter. My friends, I submit to you that this verse is the root of anti-Semitism. This moment where Jacob tricks Esav and takes maybe what was partially coming to him, what was, what was rightfully his, but still. And he's supposed to be the heir, and that's the prophecy, but still, he did it in this tricky manner. This truth is not a sweet truth. And this bitter, bitter, very, the Torah tells us a, a, a yell that you can hear to this very day. He yelled a yell that was big and very bitter. And he says, He says to his father, Bless me too, my father. To, and, and look at the verse. It's like, it's like, Hey, dad. Bless me too, dad. I'm your son too. Right? I'm Asaph, the one who's loved you all these years. I'm, I'm the Kibbut Avam guy. This guy came in a tricky way. Don't you have a blessing? Vayomer, and Isaac says, Vayomer, ba'achicha bemirma, v'ikach birchatecha. Your brother came in a tricky fashion. And again, does that mean that, that, that I'm looking down at that? I don't know. He came maybe in the way you would come. Because how, how do you get a hunt? How, how, do you, how, how are you a hunter? By sneaking up on things and by, and by throwing a spear at them or, or, a bow, or an arrow. Right? Your brother came through trickery. And he took your blessing. Boom. Vayomer, and this now here's a moment of truth. This is not even a narration, but a moment where 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 Esav is going to speak frankly, maybe because of the situation that he's so distraught that he's going to say truthfully, Vayomer, hachi karash mo Yaakov. Uh, it, very much so did they call him Jacob. That was a proper name. Why? Vayakveni He hung on. He 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 followed in my in my footsteps. Or 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 um, tracked me these two times, and again, this is a language of hunting, right? Asaph is you can see he's a master tracker, right? He's a master hunter, but the the hunter became the hunted, like in Pac Man, right? And the hunter in this case, um, Asaph, he says about his brother, he 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 tracked me twice. At Bechorati Lakach, he took my first, my birthright. But did he take the birthright, Mr. Asav? Or did you give it away? Did you sell it for some red soup? You're not being honest, Mr. Asav, and you got a problem in that. You got a problem because you can't be honest. You got an honesty issue. And I just dealt with a reporter. Uh, in, in this case, it was a Jewish reporter, and I had to tell her straight out, I was like, you are dishonest. You are not honest. And it, you, 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 even when I kind of catch you, and it's like time for you to admit a little bit, you're just not being honest. So he says, he, 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 he tracked me twice. He was on my heel twice. Once he took my birthright. He didn't take your birthright. But now he took my blessing. Vayomer. And he says to his father, don't you have still left for me a blessing? Isaac says to Esav, I made him into a master over you. And I, and I made all his brothers, you, his servants. And I gave him uh, grains and grapes I have brought close to him. And therefore, and therefore, what shall I do, my son? And Esav says to his father, Is it indeed that you only have one blessing, my father? Do you, is that it? Is that what's in your satchel? One blessing? You don't have, you don't have something else? Bless me too, my father. Very painful. It's very painful. You you want to have sympathy for Esav, but but then you get this feeling like he's using the word dad a little bit too many times, like like like, like it becomes like a utility thing. Like, hey dad, don't you have something for me too, dad? It's like it's like you start to kind of believe that it's that it's not really. 
because of love, but because of utility. Like, I need your blessing too. But then, Vaisai Sav Kolo, and here comes this big, burly, strong man, right? It says that he raised his voice, Vayevk, and he cried. <laughs> he really broke down. You get the feeling that he's given to emotions a little too much, this Asav, you know? He's very hungry, he's very tired. He get what do I need it for? And now he's like, What do you got? One blessing for me, and he starts to cry. He's he's a little bit he, he's not in control of his emotions. You get the sense that he's not so cerebral, that he's very, very physical, very given to his own emotions. Animalistic. Vayan Aviv, and his father, Isaac, understood and said, Vayomerlav, and he said to him, He name from the fat of the land will be where you dwell. And also from, uh, from above, you'll get the, the dews of the heaven. Upon the sword you shall live. And you shall serve your brother. But it will be, and this is a, this is a tricky language, but the meaning is when uh, there will be times when you'll be able to throw the yoke off of your uh, neck and the the traditional understanding is there'll be times when when Jacob is not going to be deserving of that blessing because he got it through another on the one hand meritocracy like he deserved to to get this blessing but also through trickery and if he deserves it he gets to keep it but if he does not deserve it if he's not being whole and perfect and and following God then he got it through just plain old trickery and if you got it through trickery, you'll be able to get it by, by uh, you know, right of uh, being firstborn. So if if it's just if if he's as bad as you, you're you're the firstborn. But if he's above you spiritually, then he has every right to it. But this is a lesson that says if the Jewish people are are lower down spiritually, then the pendulum swings uh, swings the other way, and then the Jew Jacob is nothing but a, a thief and a liar and a trickster. But if he is indeed holier, if indeed he's more separated and more in control of his material wants and needs, uh, then he is deserving of that blessing. But if they're all the same, then you deserve it more. Vaistom Esav et Yaakov. And Esav hated Jacob. He had a deep loathing, a seething hate. Ala bracha, because of the blessing, Asher Bechoviv, which, which his father blessed him. He, 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 he detested Jacob, because of that, not only because he stole it, but because he actually got the blessing, and he he wanted to get that blessing. Vayomer Esav belibo, Esav said in his heart, "Yikrevu yimei evelavi, the days of my father's passing, uh, the morning for my father will come close." So he's not praying for him to exactly get well. He says, "Okay, my father's going to die soon." Ve'aharga et Yaakov achi, I shall murder, I shall kill Jacob, my brother. However, once again. Here comes uh, our incredible woman here at Rivka. Vayugad le Rivka. It was told in prophetic language. It was told to Rivka the words of her of Esav, of her older son. Vatishlach vatikale Yaakov bna Katan, and she she called out and call she 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 sent out and called for Jacob, her younger brother, younger son, and she says to him, "Your your bro your brother Esav is planning." For you to kill you, he is. He has got it out for you to murder you, and therefore now, my son, listen to me. Shma bekuli, right? Shma bekuli says Rivka. I know what I'm saying. Listen to me. Vekum brach lecha, and run away. Get up and run away. El lavanachi. Go to Laban, my brother. Charana. Go to Haran. That's where I came from in last week's Torah portion. Viashavta imo yamim achadim. You'll be with him just a few days. And here you wonder that she that she is is she saying this just in order to placate her son? Does she know that he's going to be gone for twenty years? She says, "Go to my brother, sit with him for a few days, ad asher tashuv chamat until your brother's uh, violent anger shall subside. Ad shuv ach shuv af achicha mimcha when your brother's anger will subside from you, and he shall forget what you did to him. I will call for you." And I will take you from there. Why should I see you both die in one day? There's a lot of explanations about, about this verse. A lot of things here have to do with messianic times. Uh, but the bottom line is Rivka says, I shall call you. Now, now Rivka 
will never physically call her her son again, and they'll probably uh, the the simple meaning is they never see each other again. But on the deeper level, I think that Rivka is speaking from the prophetic voice, and she says, "Go there, and me, I'm going to call you, and I will bring you from there." That's really God speaking. I will call for you, and I will bring you from there. And and th that's uh, practically the end of the parsha, except that um, that Isaac, that Rivka tells Isaac, you, some some you know uh, academic types want to say that you know they want to get a divorce after this. They've got a broken marriage. Uh, it doesn't look like that at all. It looks like I think much much fairer to say is that is that what I explained before. Isaac is kind of proud that his son Yaakov knows how to play play the game. And Rivka says to Isaac, and they're in perfect communication afterwards, she says to him, um, she says to him, um, she says, I, I don't want my son uh, to marry from the, the, the goyim, the Gentiles, in, in this land. And I, I, I base, if, I, if he marries one of these people, then, then I have no life. I have no life. This is, again, another Rivka moment. She says, Lama li chaim. What do I have a life for? If, if he's going to marry, marry out. That's the traditional Jewish response. If my, if my son is going to become assimilated out, I don't have a life. I don't have a life. There's no life. You can hear like, you know, you can hear Tevya speaking. It's like, some things will not stand. I have no life if you marry out. My whole thing was to perpetuate this peoplehood, for God's sakes. We perpetuated for, for, for three and a half thousand years, and now you're going to marry out. And Isaac calls his son Yaakov. He blesses him again, and he says to him, "Do not take daughters from from the Canaanites here. Go to Padan Aram. Go to the house of Betuel, the father of your mother. Take a daughter from there, from our family. And may the God of El, El Shakai, that's the father, that's the God that I think represents always the God of fertility. Meaning, God forbid, please do not erase that understanding. It's not that there's a separate God of fertility, but this is the name of God that has to do with the blessings of fertility, right? This is the account, the email account of God, which has something to do with when you, when you need uh, blessings of fertility. And he shall bless you, you shall be fruitful, and you shall grow, and you shall be a, a nation of uh, peoples. Peoples, many peoples will come from you. He shall give you the blessing of Abraham to you and to your seed with you so that you shall inherit this land which God gave to Abraham. So that is the, again you see that after this event of the, 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 the tricky procurement of the blessing he is not rejected. He is not rejected. Okay, my friends, it's been an hour and, and 10 minutes, and I've had a lot of fun with you, and thank you so much for the opportunity to give me a chance to go through this Torah portion. And, and when I read this Torah portion, I'm immediately brought to the sights, smells, uh, tastes of the land of Israel, even though I'm here in Pico Robertson, Los Angeles, California, in the furthest west. I like to think of it as the furthest west because my heart is in the east, but I am in the furthest west, Anuchi. I am at the furthest western point. Next week, I'll also be in San Francisco, which is maybe even further away in some ways uh, from the land of Israel. Uh, you know the sponsors that we have for the show, the good folks at Tchelet, the Blue String. That'll bring you closer, T-E-K-H-E-L-E-T uh, dot com. Uh, and I'm, a, you know, that's my Nike sponsorship uh, uh, contract. So buy a Tchelet and we'll all be kept in Tchelet. And <laughs> things will be good uh, for the Jewish people because we're coming back home and knowledge is being revealed to us. Let's be true blue Jews uh, in the language of uh, Rabbi Mike. And I also recommend wines from the land of Israel. Hebron wines from the Hebron winery will just whisk you away. So if you're here in Los Angeles, go to Glotmart and pick up one of those wines. Thank you to the Jewish community of Hebron, uh, where uh, so many of these stories take place. And you can feel it and see it and connect to the characters of the Torah, the Bible, the founders of the Jewish people, and the founders of ethical monotheism. When you come on tour for Hebron, so go to hebronfund.org. And of course, always contribute. makes so much of a difference to us. Thank you to Django.net, the uh, infor information superhighway of the startup nation, the Jewish people in the land of Israel, Django.net. Um, and our good friends at J Brick Building, uh, the State of Israel, one Lego brick at a time, and the Jewish story, one brick at a time. 
uh, write me an email and uh, write me an email with with any questions, thoughts, or issues. I like a picture of you. Send me a picture of yourself or your family. Uh, certainly, if you have the blue string, send me a picture of that. Uh, if you have a flag of Israel up, send me a picture of that. If you have a wine from the land of Israel, send me a picture of that. Okay, I want to see a picture of yourself with those things um, that, that, that we talk about on the show to help us stay pure and true and connected uh, to the story of the great return to Zion, the Shivat Zion, and the Machzir Shechinatol Zion when God returns his presence to Zion. That's right. All right, folks, I'm going to get some, some well-deserved rest, and I want to bless you. Uh, with those blessings that the, 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 the God of Israel shall bless you and, and give you success and, 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 mul and multiply in all of your endeavors. May God bless you wherever you are and whatever you're doing. Just stay part of the story. Tune in. He's always broadcasting. Tune in to the Land of Israel Network with the other great shows. And stay tuned and stay connected. If you want to see me in Los Angeles or in, um, uh, in San Francisco, write me an email, yishai at thelandofisrael.com. So stay strong, stay tuned, stay connected. God bless you and shalom. What does it mean to be a Jew in the land of Israel as a Jew in Judea? What is our message to the world? We're finally back in our land and we get to ask these questions. Ezrat Hashem, we're going to make Judea and Samaria an issue for the entire world to know that the Jews have a place in the world. Israel Inspired with Ari Abramowitz and 